Hello guys, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Danny Burke and today we're talking about hostages. Now sometimes for many different reasons a person takes another person and won't let them leave. They are now a hostage. But sometimes that hostage comes up with a very clever way of communicating with the people that are trying to save them. These are true mind blowing stories. This is the top 10 secret messages sent by hostages. Also if you like the shirt that I am wearing right now then head on over to mostamazingshop.com. We've We've got hats, we've got t-shirts, we've got every sort of clothing imaginable with most amazing on it. Alright coming at number 10 now we have the pizza app. In 2015 a story emerged of a woman who used the pizza hut app to escape from her abusive boyfriend. Cheryl Treadway was a 25 year old woman who was being held against her will by her boyfriend. He was high on meth and had a knife so running out of the door was not really an option for her. So one night she convinced him to let them order a pizza through the pizza hut app. When the order came through it was for a large pepperoni pizza and the message read please help get 911 to me. The Pizza Hut employees passed the details on to the police who arrived at the house to arrest the boyfriend and get the woman and her children to safety. What an incredible story. Next up at number 9 we have torture. In 1965 Jeremiah Denton's jet was shot down during the Vietnam war in 1965. He was taken as a prisoner of war by the North Vietnamese. Now He was one of the earliest and highest ranking officials ever to be taken prisoner so his captors fought forced him to participate in a television interview. It was shown in the US. During the interview Denton kept blinking. He told them it was because of how bright the television lights were but actually those blinks were sending a message. You see the blinks were Morse code. When the US decoded them they realized he was spelling out the word torture. It was a very scary message for the US government to receive. Denton was released in 1973 after 8 years as a prisoner. He was awarded for his bravery. Coming in at number 8 now we have My Dear Mummy. In 1940 Sub Lieutenant John Pryor was captured by the Germans during World War 2. He would send home innocent letters talking about the prison's vegetable garden or what book he happened to be reading. However they all contained secret messages about how he had been captured and what was going on inside the prison camp. They were coded very complexly and when John came to write his memoirs in 1980 he had actually forgotten his own code. It took a whole team of mathematicians to finally crack it. However they were about 40 years too late. I don't have time to go into how the code works exactly but I don't doubt that John Pryor was a very clever man. At number 7 now we have the pizza call. This was a story shared on reddit by Keith Weisinger. He was a police dispatcher who answered emergency calls. One day he answered the phone. 911 what is your emergency? 123 Main Street. Ok what's going on there? I'd like to order a pizza for delivery. Ma'am you've reached 911. Yeah I know. Can I have a large with half pepperoni half mushrooms and peppers? Keith was very confused at this point but the penny dropped when he asked if she couldn't talk about this emergency because there was someone in the room with her. She replied yes that's correct. He sent a police officer to the house and found her beaten up with her drunken boyfriend there. He was arrested. Keith praised the woman for her quick thinking and ingenuity. Next up at number 6 now we have the Dutch train hostage crisis. In 1975 7 terrorists seized a train with 50 passengers on board in the Netherlands. The driver was immediately killed. On the third day another hostage was killed. The Dutch government were paralyzed. Did they hold out and hope for the terrorists to surrender or did they try and save them risking a bloody gun battle that could kill all of the hostages. Then one night a man aboard the train used a mirror to flash a message at the police in Morse code. It said come and help us get out. This convinced the government to take action. Less than 24 hours later a gun battle broke out. There were injuries and deaths on both sides but finally the soldiers were able to rescue most of the hostages. Maybe we should all learn Morse code. Next up at number 5 now we have ISIS. In 2014 terrorists claiming to be in ISIS took hostages in a cafe in Sydney. A mother called Mel said that she had received a message from her 18 year old son who was one of the hostages. Now this is despite the terrorists strictly controlling contact with anyone outside of that cafe. The text simply said mum I'm in the Lindic cafe in Sydney. Her heart stopped and she texts back asking what is going on? Are you ok? He replied I'm ok mum can't talk. That was the last she heard from him. Fortunately he did make it out alive. However two hostages were killed during the event. Alright at number 4 now we have the pirates. In 2009 Paul and Rachel Chandler were captured by Somali pirates in the Indian Ocean. They had been keeping a blog of their travels but after not posting for a few days the family became concerned. The area was known to be dangerous. Before they left the family had agreed to not send them a message saying emergency 
Ramsey call urgently because they didn't want to cause any panic that might put them in danger. Instead, family member Sarah went onto Rachel's blog and simply wrote, please ring Sarah. When they didn't get a reply, they raised the alarm. It took an astonishing 13 months, but eventually Paul and Rachel were released. Okay, for our number three now, we have the Colombian message. This one is actually people sending a secret message to a hostage, but it's too good to leave out. In 2010, the FARC guerrillas had been holding some hostages from the Colombian government for years. The Colombian army wanted to let them know that they hadn't been forgotten and to not give up hope. They needed a message that would get past the soldiers, but not an observant hostage. So they inserted a secret Morse code message into a popular song that was being played on the radio at that time. Listen very carefully here for the little bips in the background of the music. If you translate that Morse code, it says, 19 people rescued, you're next, don't lose hope. The message was heard by them. The hostages didn't give up hope and were eventually rescued. Next up at number two now, we have the Chinese letter. In May 2017, an Arizona woman bought a purse from Walmart. When she got home, she found a note inside. It was written in a Chinese dialect and appeared to be from a desperate prisoner. The note said that prisoners were being forced to work 14 hours a day with no breaks. If they didn't finish, they were beaten. If they got sick, the cost of medicine was deducted from their salary. They signed off by saying prison in China is unlike prison in America. Walmart said there was no way to verify the origin of the letter, but some people say this is proof that companies are not doing enough to check where their products are being made. And finally at number one now, we have stitching. During World War II, Major Alexis Castagli was taken prisoner by the Germans in 1941 and sent to a prisoner camp. He passed the time by sewing. He would sew intricate pieces with beautiful patterns on. The Nazis were so impressed by them that they would hang them in their offices at the prison. However, little did they know that the pieces contained secret messages. Around the edges was a pattern of Morse code. If the Nazis had decoded this, it would have read, God save the king and Hitler. Both of these messages would have got Alexis killed if they were decoded. Luckily, they never were for four years until the war ended. The stitchings have now appeared in museums in London. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed all of that. Did you find the secret message that I left for you in this video? I hope not, because I didn't actually leave a message. Or did I? I didn't. My name is Danny Burke. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>